the next polynomial operation we're going to talk about is polynomial multiplication. There are three basic ways that you can do the work to multiply two polynomials together. Regardless of which of the three ways that I'm going to show you you do, you're still going to do the exact same number of multiplications. It's just some of them are easier to use depending upon what type of polynomials you are multiplying. The first method that I'm going to show you is the distributive method. Okay, And I will let you use the distributive method in the following cases. A monomial, monom, monomial times anything. A binomial. times anything. And those are the only two cases. So if you have, and this is the smallest degree thing that you're multiplying. So if you have a trinomial times a trinomial, I don't want you using dis distribution. It becomes very messy. Um, I will show you kind of why it gets really messy on there. The next method is the box method. The box method uses the most paper. Okay. Um, most paper. Okay, my recommendations for using the box method are any um, trinomial times a third plus degree. Okay, um, you can even use it for anything if you want to. Uh, my recommendation is if you cannot do the last method, if the last method seems confusing to you, that you use the box method. Um, so a lot of students use that. My preference, though, is regular multiplication. Regular, if I spell it correctly. Okay, regular multiplication is what I recommend. Um, that is the recommended method I have for every single po polynomial multiplication, with the exception of the simple monomial times anything, or we're going to find a binomial times a binomial, um, and I'm going to show you the special case for that at the end. So I'm going to do the same, multi um, I'm going to do a simple monomial times anything to show you distributive. I'm going to do a binomial times a trinomial for each of these three methods. So you can see what I mean for this. So example one, I'm going to do 3x times 5x minus 2. And for the distributive method, I prefer that you use arrows to show me what you're actually doing here. 3x times 5x is 3 times 5, which is 15. And x times x is x squared. And then I have 3x times negative 2. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And don't forget the x. And talking about polynomial addition and subtraction, which was one of your previous lessons, you cannot combine these any further. That's your final answer. Okay, so that's a monomial times anything. This could have been a trinomial. Uh, four-term polynomial, five-term polynomial. The term that's outside the parentheses needs to distribute to everything inside the parentheses. So now I'm going to do a binomial times a trinomial. Okay, And I'm going to do the same one for all three of these and show you how to do that. So I'm going to do 2x plus 5 times... 3x squared minus 4x plus 4. So for the distributive one, this needs to be multiplied by that whole thing, and then the 5 needs to be multiplied by the whole thing. So this needs to be rewritten to show your work for the distributive method. This needs to be rewritten as the 2x times the whole thing. 
plus the 5 times the whole thing. And then we do the distribution, just like we did up here, because I now have a monomial times something here. So 2x times 3x squared is 2 times 3 is 6. x times x squared is x cubed. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. x times x is x squared. 4 times 2 is positive 8. x. 5 times 3 is 15. x squared. 5 times negative 4x is negative 20x. 5 times 4 is 20. Now I need to combine like terms. I have cubes, 6 of them. I have squareds, negative 8 plus 15 is 7 of them. I have x's, which are 8 minus 20, which is negative 12 of those. And then I have 20 constants. So for distributive way of multiplication, if you've got a polynomial times another polynomial, you take the first polynomial and you write it in front of each, uh, in front of the second polynomial for however many terms there are here. And then you do the monomial times anything here. So once you get beyond a binomial times something, this becomes very, very long. And that's why I don't recommend you use it for anything more than a binomial times something. So box method, same problem. What I'm going to do is I am going to draw a box. And my box is going to have two columns and then three rows. OK. In the columns, I'm going to put the first one, and then my rows, minus 4x, plus 4. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each column by each thing in the rows. So 2x times 3x squared is 6x cubed. 5 times 3x squared is 15x squared. 2x times negative 4x is negative 8x squared. 5 times negative 4x is negative 20x. 2x times 4 is 8x. 5 times 4 is 20. If you notice, I have the exact same six answers to my multiplications that I did previously. Now I, what I need to do is I need to combine like terms. In most cases, if you're using the box method, like terms are going to be on diagonals. Okay, So I have a 6x cubed, 15x squared minus 8x squared is 7x squared. Negative 20x plus 8x is negative 12x plus 20. And notice I get the exact same answer that I did previously. I did the exact same number of multiplications. Um, I did have to rewrite both of them. The first one I had to rewrite by pulling the binomial out to um, multiply it by each term. So I did have to rewrite. This starts to get big if you start doing um, anything more than like trinomial times trinomial. And the last method is regular multiplication. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write the polynomial with the most terms on top. I'm going to write the other polynomial below it, just like regular multiplication. So the one with the most terms is 3x squared minus 4x plus 4. What I do is I leave a blank. If there's a missing, like if I had an x squared, if there was a missing x, I would leave a blank for x's. Just like there's a 0, um, like 101. I have 100, 0 tens, and 1 1. I put that 0 in there as a placeholder. So I'm going to do the same thing here. 
Then I have 2x plus 5. And now all I do is regular multiplication. 5 times 4 is a positive 20. 5 times negative 4x is negative 20x. 5 times 3x squared is 15x squared. Then I'm going to multiply the 2x times everything. And just like regular uh, multiplication, you end up with a 0 in this column. But when you do the multiplications, don't necessarily have to write that 0. Just make sure you line up everything. So if it's just got x's, line up your x's. If it's got x squared, line up your x squared. 2x times 4 is positive 8x. 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x squared. That's 2x, that's the negative 8, and x times x is x squared. And 2x times 3x squared is 6x cubed. Now add vertically, 6x cubed. 15x squared minus 8x squared is 7x squared. Negative 20x plus 8x is minus 12x plus 20. And again, my recommendation is that you do your polynomial multiplication using regular multiplication. Okay? Box method, because you're, you've got to make sure you leave enough room inside the boxes, it can start to get really, really messy. Distributive property gets really messy any time you're more than just a binomial. Okay? Notice I had to do rewriting. I did the exact same six multiplications. This did take up a little more space than this one, but to me, this gives me a visual way to make sure I don't mess up adding like terms together. If I have all my constants, then my x's, then my x squareds, and my x cubes, it gives me a nice vertical method so that I can um, combine my like terms without having to bounce back and forth all over the place to combine them. Now, what I want to show you is a special case of the distributive property for a binomial times a binomial. Okay? And this one, I will allow you to do in your head um, as long as you don't mess it up. If you start showing me on quizzes that you're messing it up, I'm going to make you write it out. So a binomial times a binomial. So 2x plus 5 times 3x minus 2. So this works for a binomial times a binomial. So I'm going to take this first term times the first term. Okay? So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that first term times the last term. And notice these are on the outside. So I did the first terms. I'm doing the outside terms. So 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. Then I'm going to take the 5 times the 3x. And these are my inside terms. 5 times 3x is 15x. And then I'm going to do the 5 times the negative 2. And those are what are called the last terms. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And then what you're going to end up doing is combining these two middle terms. So the final answer is 6x squared. Negative 4 plus 15 is 11x's minus 10. F stands for first. O stands for outer. I stands for inner. And L stands for last. If you are in eighth grade math, algebra 1, or geometry, and you are using the FOIL method, I either need to see the arrows on your distribution here, or I need you to write F-O-I-L so I know what method you're doing. If you are in algebra 2 or beyond, 
I don't need to see any work to go from here to here. And I'm going to show you how I do these problems without showing any work for those that are in Algebra 2 or beyond. Let me do 2x minus 5 times 3x plus 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first and the lasts first and write them down. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Negative 5 times 2 is minus 10. I know I'm going to have to combine these two middle terms, so I'm going to do them both by pointing at them. I'm going to point to the outers, then I'm going to point to the inners. I'm going to say them in my head when I do them, but I'm going to say them out loud for you, and then I'm just going to combine them when I get done. And I know that that is going to have an x, so I'm just worried about the number portion here. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. 4 minus 15 is negative 11. So for Algebra 2 or beyond, for a binomial times a binomial, I do not need to see any work. Okay? And for Algebra 2 and beyond, I'd expect you by the end of the um, Algebra 2 year, Probably at the end of Algebra 2 first semester, if you start out by showing the work for binomial times a binomial, by the end of first semester, try to get confident that you can do it without doing the work. Okay, you want to become more efficient on your time when you're working on these operations. So from here to here, binomial times a binomial, I don't need to see any work. A monomial times anything, I don't need to see any of the work except for the final answer. Anything else, I do need to see some sort of work. Um, and I don't care necessarily which method you use, except do not use the distributive method if you have anything more than a binomial times something.